whatever your time zone may hold, we say greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We come to lift the name of Jesus. Say that everything that have breath, praise you the Lord. So magnify the Lord with me because he's greatly to be praised. Out of the sheep, glory be to God. Amen. Praise Jesus. Out of the sheep, glory to God. So we honor the Lord today. We thank God for your listening ear and the opportunity once again to declare the word of the Lord in your ear. We appreciate God for what he's doing and going to do. We just thank him because he is God. He woke us up this morning and started us on a brand new day. We woke up today, amen, but all is well. Some of us have a little trauma of different things in our lives, but God yet is still good through it all. You know, I woke up, my son called me, and he was a little panicking on uh, the doctor's report. But I'm glad I know a God. Amen. That's a miracle work. I bullshit. And I just reassure him, I don't know she goes to God. That's what man say, but God, they say. Hallelujah. Praise God. These doctors sometimes will tell you you have dead and you ain't nothing wrong with you. So you gotta be wise and don't take everything they say to heart. Go before the master's throne and talk to King Jesus. How the machine. They'll tell you finna drop dead in the moment and you feel fine. Don't believe every lie come along. Everything the doctor say ain't always true. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, they'll use us for a guinea pig anyway. So how the machine glory to God. I tell you what does say the Lord. All is well. Amen. Praise God. And I give one of them uh, regiment. Amen. That hallelujah. Praise God. That uh, Zangosteins a uh, juice. It used to be named Mangosteen. They name it Zang. I think it's ain't Zangosteen now. But anyway, uh, she had a heart bypass. A few years later, her arteries things clog up again and they want to go in again. Her son put her on this mango steam juice and she ain't had to have no surgery. So don't believe everything they say because sometimes the devil get in them. Amen. And sometimes they want to try something new. And you know, they don't have a problem using us for a guinea pig. So don't believe every report. You have to check and um how to machine and see what the lord got to say about the matter i always consult my god amen they'll tell you you to fall over dead in the next minute but what jesus said hallelujah praise god hallelujah so don't believe every report how to machine but the lord sure assured me in my heart told me i was shown so when god say that it's good it's done it's taken care of how does she glory to God? He's a miracle worker. He's a performer that does that the impossible. So I told him, no, no even fret, son. Just get you some of this mango steam juice. Drink it three ounces a day, an ounce one, three times a day, and just open up your any any blue card that you got going on. Just gonna move the move whatever it is and believe God. Hallelujah. Say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He's a miracle worker. Praise God. When we didn't have medicine, we had to trust him. Learn to trust him now. Praise God. Well, these people have used a guinea pig out of here. And we could, some people could have still been here today. I had a lady in my church. She could have still been here today. She would have listened to me. She let them people experiment on her. Are uh, we going to keep you from getting cancer? Well, if I ain't got it now. We'll deal with that one again. But don't be trying to him to uh, prevent nothing. Chopping me up and cutting me up like that. And I told her, I said, don't you go up under that knife. God done heal you, you're fine. When I met you, you barely could move. I prayed for you and God and did a miracle in your body. Now you're walking without a walker. You can walk on your own and you're doing great. Your body is healed. Well, they say that uh, they just want to prevent in the future from me having cancer. 
child, leave it alone. It ain't broken. Don't go look for it. She wouldn't listen to me. When they got to chopping on her, they killed that lady. She wouldn't listen to me. Don't go look for something ain't there. Praise God. Wait till it come and deal with it. Praise God. They tell you they're trying to prevent it and they're going to be chopping the devil, using them to kill you and bring your body in. Learn to trust God. Believe everything they say. You believe everything they say. You will never leave the house. Hallelujah. And walk by faith. Amen. Praise God. She wouldn't listen to me. When I mean, they got through chopping her up, she was she just gave up and died. She said, I don't want to live no more. She lay down in her apartment and just gave up and died. One day I heard they found her dead. Because they done chopped her up, done cut her liver up and cut her up so bad. Until now she ain't no good. Hurting all the time. Wasn't even hurting. But now when they got through with her, she in pain all the time. You better get some wisdom. I don't care if they tell me my toe finna fall off. If I don't see it falling off, well, okay. I'm good. Don't come telling me something. If I ain't got them symptoms, don't you ain't chopping me up. I don't have them symptoms. I don't care what you say I'm supposed to have. And if I ain't having it, you're not finna cut on me. You're not finna bother me like that. Because no. Better get some wisdom. They just trying to make the insurance company some money. Praise God. Like my doctor told me, whether you come or not, I'm going to get paid. So it don't matter to me whether you show up or not. You right about that called Dr. Jesus, my doctor. He's been doctoring on me ever since I'm big enough to know that God is a healer. So nah, nah. No. It was told to me as a young lady in the age of 18. I had two tumors removed out of my breath. They told me by the age of 30, I wouldn't have no breath. What well, I'm here to say, they still up there and they still kicking. Praise God. Devil is a lie. They don't know everything. Not been what? I wasn't even 20 yet when they told me that. So I know my God is a healer. I know he's a miracle worker. And they took two tombs out bigger than an egg out of my breath. I was just 18 years old. That job is a lie. But by the time you get 30, you ain't going to have no bosom. Oh, that devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. I stand on God. Praise God. I ain't had no problem with him since. The devil is a lie. You got to believe God. He believe everything God say. He don't know it all. He don't know it all. Hallelujah. But you better learn to consult King Jesus. And I tell you, when that young, when that lady, she was 60 some years old, when she got on that mango steam juice and started taking three ounces a day, got the look again, wasn't no clog no more. They didn't even have to do surgery no more. Called the Mangosteen juice had took out all the clog that was any in there. Hallelujah. Just the boss said the doctor told me I would uh, be in a wheelchair at the age of 50. But God is a healer. I know that's right. He healed the body. Haramushe. Hallelujah. You better know what who God is. You can't be everything these people say. Man, these people cut on you, you perfectly healthy. When they get through with you, they have you dead. No. If I don't feel half dead, you ain't fit to bother me. Leave it alone. It ain't broken. Don't be coming trying to prevent nothing. I got a God that's a, a miracle worker. No. That was, is a lie. So I trust him. How do she? Hallelujah. Father God, in Jesus' name, the healer that you are, we come before you and give an honor and praise to you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we ask you to let us be led by your Holy Spirit. And Father God, we bind every spirit that come to him to kill and destroy. And Lord, by your strike, we were healed. Your word is not a lie. And Father, we stand on your promises and help us to live so that you can heal us and bless us. Because of our life, because of what we present unto you. Haramashi, glory to God. 
and lead us not into uh, temptation, but deliver us from evil. Help us, lead us, and direct us, Father God. Have mercy upon us and deliver us from any iniquity. Anything that's not pleasing to your sight, we submit unto thee, Lord, and we cry holy. We ask you to lead us and guide us in the path of righteousness that you may be glorified. And we ask you to say to the utmost, Lord God. And Lord, I thank you for the miraculous healing in my child. I thank you, Lord God, for hearing my cry and honor my prayers. I thank you, Father, for saving me with the Holy Ghost, filling me up with your Holy Spirit, and leading God me every day. Help me to do that which is pleasing to you. Speak through me according to your will. Guide my tongue, my thoughts. Keep my mind steadfast on you. And help me to lean out to my own understanding. And Lord, we ask you to bless on the sound of my voice. We ask you to send healing and deliver. Uproot that which you need to be uprooted. Strengthen and edify that was where you will have exalted. And Father, how do she, how do say? Lord, we bless you this day and we magnify your holy name. And we ask you to touch each and every one of us. Lord, look on this country as a whole. We ask you to say to the utmost, give us a word to win the game sale. And Father, we just thank you for a brand new day we haven't seen before. And we say yes out of a sheet, yes to your will and yes to your way. And glorify your name in Jesus' name. We pray. Out of a sheet, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Truly, God is greatly to be praised. So magnify the Lord with me. Out of my sheet. Have mercy upon me, God, and deliver me. Hallelujah. Deliver me. Deliver me from the snares of this world, from the entrapment. Because I'm going to trust you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, we deny the power of God now. We don't think God is going to heal us no more. I, I beg your pardon. See, I'm one of them crazy faith people. I believe God. And when you believe God, you God told me a long time ago, he said, I move by your faith, not by your doubts. So when you believe God, you got to stand on God's promises. He said, remind me. He put me in remembrance of my own word. We, everybody want to talk about faith and everybody want to talk about uh, the healing and deliverance that God gave us. But when it comes to proving ground, we buckle. That's why we need to pray. Hallelujah. The spouse said, don't complain, but trust God. Hallelujah, because it's in the word. Hallelujah. machine. And you got to resist the devil. Just got the doctor say you got it. And it may be true what you got. But when you turn your eyes, lift up my eyes into the hill, from which come my help. My healing come from the Lord. And he will not suffer my foot to be moved. Neither do he slumber nor sleep. He's always open and aware and looking and watching. So ain't nothing that my God can't do. He can do the impossible. So I don't care what the doctor say. And I go see Dr. Jesus. I go to the doctor. But I'm only going to let him do so much. You ain't going looking for nothing on me. No. I live holy. How do I see? I live what I preach. How do I see? And so I hold God to his word. How do I see? That's why I live right. So when I have a problem, I'm, I'm looking to you, King Jesus. I'm I'm calling and trusting on you, Father God. Because I'm living what you told me to live. And we don't have to be right with pain. Praise God. They start messing with you next thing. You got nerves eating you up. And they want to give you a shot for this and a shot for that. That devil is a lie. How am a sheep. No, you're not going to drug me up with all that push. That's why I told God to deliver me from all that blood pressure feel. Oh, no. Hallelujah. If I'm going to go, I'm going to go. Ain't nobody can stop me but you came, Jesus. So I live holy. So when I call upon your name, I'm looking for you to move for me because I live a life. I'm not talking a life. I'm living this life. So I expect for you to come to my aid. I expect for you to protect me. I don't machine. But if you don't, I'm still serving. I ain't going to stop serving. Praise God. But hallelujah, because Daniel 
Hallelujah. Had to go in the lion's den and you protected him. Had him a sheep. And David ran down the sheep bear and killed lions and you protected him. Surely you can protect us from the, the sickness and diseases. We just got to get on the natural me me measurement and uh, regimen and use what God put in our heart to use. Sometimes we can divert the diseases, but we ain't trying. Praise God. And he's all shaking up because of what the doctor says. His son, that other doctor just told you a few weeks ago, everything was great. Now they want to tell you something else. He told you that when they sent you to him, they had you, them thinking that you would have dead. And you were nothing like they'd say you were. So be wise. They'll use us for guinea pigs. You better be wake up. Smell the roses. Praise God. You ain't going to use me for no guinea pig. Holler my sheep. I, I'm going to consult God first and see what he got to say. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord taught me a long time ago. Don't you know? I remember I used to have real bad pains. And the Lord told me, don't you know if that was true, you would be in the hospital a half day now? He told me to rebuke them symptoms. Bind up the work of Satan. And I've been going strong ever since. And that's been many years, over 20 years ago. No, I don't, I don't take what the devil's saying. Just because it's, it's a letter from the devil don't mean I got to cash it. No. I don't have to believe it. Hallelujah. God said he's a healer, so hey, I'm, I'm crazy enough to, hey, come on here. Come on here. Use a healer, use a provider, use a way maker, use a promise keeper. Hey, miracle worker, I'm calling on you. Come see about your child. I'm ashamed. But whether you show up or not, I'm still going to be faithful. See, years ago, they would talk faith. Years ago, we produced faith. Today, it's more easy to pop a pill than to believe God. It's more easy to go on an operating table than to believe God. So we resort to the, <coughs> excuse me, the wisdom of this world. We don't believe God anymore. <clears throat> I don't know, Shay Kate. Glory, hallelujah. Where I do it, my paper towel. Hallelujah. So we love, we pray that all your weekend was great. Amen. Praise God. We say what the Lord is doing. How he blessing us. Amen. Praise the Lord. He brings us also. God, let me shake it. Hallelujah. Because without him, we can't do anything. And we love the Lord and appreciate him being a miracle worker that he is. Hallelujah. She. God is good. And I'm going to glorify him until he called me home. I'm going to magnify his name. Amen. Praise God. Because he's so worthy to be praised. And Amen. We want to talk about faith. Well, it's time to produce faith. Hallelujah. It's time to result to some herbs and not all the synthetic stuff. Praise God. Now, this medicine and tell, tell other parts of your body. So you got to go on there and such out some, some herbs. Praise God. Get you some herbs. Work on that body. Hallelujah. I didn't I should have got me a ginger pack and brought it here with me. I forgot to get one. Hey, Amen. My throat want to cut up a little bit, so I need to put some ginger down that throat. Hey, Amen. You can get the ginger root and boil the ginger root. It's good for so many things. And if it's too strong for you, just weaken it down a little bit. And uh, my secretary uh, got me healed from uh, from um. Oh, what you call that acid that come back up her throat? Uh, re acid reflux. Yeah. Or gastritis. She healed. I got healed from acid reflux. I used to take them with perfect pills, but when I met her, she used to come and stay with me sometime, and she would boil me a, a ginger root, and she would fix me one of them big old cups that you get from a tea from the uh, fast food. 
and she giving that big old cup twice a day. If not twice, she makes sure she give it to me once a day. And I was drinking that big old cup of ginger. And uh, within a few months or so, and that been over 12 years ago or 15 years ago, I never had, I had a little problem lately. Uh, last year, I think it did my stomach flare up a little bit and thing. And uh, I got back on my ginger root. When I got back on my ginger root, and started taking it more regular, you know, sometimes it take a few months, it may take six months or eight months, but you stay on it. And it'll heal what's wrong with you. Sometimes it be it take a little longer than one or two times. You gotta be willing to stay on it faithfully. And uh it healed my stomach, my throat and everything. So it's good to take the ginger. It uh upset stomach, as it overeating. Um, it's good for a heartburn, good for many things, colds, when you get a, feel like you're coming out with a cold, excuse me, start drinking that ginger right away, and you will turn it around, you don't have to go south with it, and then how to she glory to God, uh, like I say, and I keep saying I'm going to do it. But I put some rub some aloe in my hair today because you said I you know I have forgotten that because I'm, my hair is getting thinner and thinner and I used to have a bushy hair to hair. So I was trying to figure out what's wrong with it. And the Lord reminded me I hadn't put no more aloe in it in a few years now. So I had to go back to my aloe. Just rubbing my aloe in my hair. It'll strengthen it and it'll bring it back to youth. Look at. Praise God. I'll be glad when it turned white. I'm so tired of it. Hey, Amen. I don't like no danger to look in the hair. I want my hair solid white. My husband won't let me die. If he let me die, I'd die solid civil. But nevertheless, praise God. Hallelujah. You got to stay on your uh, fights here. Say You have to stay on all the fruit diet. And uh, Halamashi, he said he's a herbalist. Hollow machine, and it does. It turns your health around. It really does help to help the health, and we don't have no reason for it to be. My son was saying this morning, Mama, when I used to eat right, and I got off that red meat, got off the meat. He said I ain't had no problem, cause he got such a or whatever you got, a thing. But God keep him. Doctor says go to harden up his arteries and everything like that he had a little breathing problem once in a while but he still can work two jobs and do what he got to do and how to make she go to god and he said but when i eat right don't eat right then i have a flare up we just got to eat right praise god we don't never eat no more meat that's okay but mama i love red meat but do you love the deal let it go if you don't eat no meat you'll be fine you ain't getting nothing but a bunch of chemicals no way so if you don't eat it, you'll be better off. I went uh, no meat in my diet for six years. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I'm I'm sorry I even got off it. I'm getting going to get back on it. I've just been eating meat now about a year and a half, maybe. But I'm going to get back on my diet where I didn't eat no meat, period. And I did fine because the beans are your proteins. So it ain't like you just got to eat that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I didn't eat uh, no meat. And God took care of me six years. And I did better with six years. I never had to go in the hospital. Which I never had been in the hospital a lot, no way. But uh, when I did go, I always came back the same day if I had to go. But usually God hold me up. We got to clean up our system. We got to get our body back. We come from the earth. You ain't number dirt. So when you plant your potatoes in the ground, I know they tell you don't eat potatoes, but you can't listen to everything they say. You came from the earth. So you got to feed the body the earth stuff. This is the healing that we get from the food from the ground. You're better off with food from the ground. You made of dirt. You ain't never dirt no way. So put the right stuff in your body. 
Fruits ain't going to hurt nobody. Fruit going to clean your systems out. Fruit going to open up your arteries and stuff. Amen? It's going to help you do better. Praise God. And when I went to the hospital, and I'm not a fruit eater. I love grapes. That's about it. God put me on uh, papaya years ago, but I'm hot headed. I don't eat the papaya like he told me to eat it. I was having stomach issues. He told me to eat that papaya. He told me to eat, eat it on a salad. And the papaya heals the stomach. It's like an antibiotic to the body. Papaya will help you a whole lot. Papaya is good. And I ain't come on here and try to be no herbalist because I'm not. But I'm just telling you from stuff that help my body. Amen. Praise God. You can go on there and read up some more about different things. But if you start eating from the fruit, like you say, fruits, fruits, fruits ain't going to hurt nobody. Fruit is good. It makes the body purify. It helps clean that body out. Because you ain't putting all that hormones up in you. Praise God. And uh, I remember years ago, men didn't have a breath, but they eat all that hormones on that meat. Now you got them with breath too. And I ain't talking about the one that trying to be me. I'm talking about just a natural man. I said, Lord, I remember men and women had no problem with no having no breath. Children walk around here obese and looking like that because all them chemicals they feed us. They blow up them chickens, chicken, a little bit of chicken. When they get through pumping that needle in that chicken after he done got dressed and clean, Lord, that chicken thigh bigger than a drumstick of a turkey because he's full of chemicals. Anytime something dead and you can pump it with some fluid, and blow it up. You got to know what you're eating. Praise God. Chicken ain't what it used to be. So you better know what you eat. But nevertheless, fruits and vegetables should be all our diet, really. We'll be all right. We ain't going to die. I just think I couldn't do without meat. Meat It's just a mind thing. You, you want to live, you'll do it. You want to get up with some of that medication you got, you'll do it. Praise God. Sometimes you need to do it to get rid of diabetes sometimes. Or whatever you're going through with. You need it. You need it. Your system needs to be healed. Your system needs to be cleaning. You're cussing and clogging it up with mad stuff. And we from the ground. So we got to do what we do to the ground. What you do, you till the ground. So you need to work on this body and give it what it needs. So it could be some healing in the body. Praise God. When I start drinking that tea, that ginger tea, I made tea, I say tea, but she just put some water, ginger. You can put a little honey if you want to. I wouldn't bother about the sugar because we already about half dead with the sugar anyway. Use you some honey to sweeten your stuff. And uh, stuff like that. And learn the juice. Praise God. I'm getting to myself eating, drinking all that different juice, which I used to didn't do. Amen. Putting in, they got so much of sugar and junk in it. You do better just get your own fruit and juice it yourself. Own vegetables and juice it yourself. You'll be fine. Praise God. Because uh, they just trying to feed thousands, millions, and millions, and billions of people. Because when I was in the ninth grade, they always say it was going to be so many people in the world until the ground is not going to be able to produce the food they need. And so they cook, they make a lot of this stuff in the warehouses and stuff like that. Even the chickens don't even get to touch the ground no more. That's what made us even healthier because the chicken will have healthy in it. The chicken don't touch no ground no more. Praise God. And so, therefore, they're not even getting the nutrient they need in their body to put in our body. So, we're depleted. Now, they want you to pull all that synthetic stuff down your body, taking all them vitamin E's, vitamin D's, and stuff like that. Praise God, trying to get stuff in your body. You better take care of yourself. Praise God. You want to eat to live and not die. Amen. So, nevertheless, I'm getting the word, say the Lord.
Hallelujah. But they use the herb. That's what I use herbs. I don't miss you. Glory to God. And for my healing, instead of going to the doctor for upset stomach, going to the doctor for indigestion, going to the doctor for my nerves bad, going to the doctor for this and that. No, it's healing. How do we sheep? No, no, no. They got that synthetic stuff that's going to kill you. Praise God. I know some people are still been here today if they didn't listen. But they chose to listen to the doctor and let him chop them all the time to save them and put them in a burn them up and do everything else and now the next thing you know the doctor can't help him no more you ain't finna chop me up like that and you ain't finna burn me up like that the devil is a lie i'm going to see jesus i'm gonna talk to him about it praise god make your life miserable and you're burnt up right here and stuff oh no come on jesus time for you to heal me i live holy for you now you brought, brought paul and peter through and Paul said he was at death many times because you brought Paul up all right. Now you got to be that Hezekiah. You got to turn your head to face to the wall and you got to say, Lord, Lord, look at my life. I live for you. I teach others to worship you, to honor you. See, that's what I love about Hezekiah. He had a life that he can put God in remembrance of and it made God have mercy on him. Because he has something he could offer up to God and to show God. Hallelujah. How he faithful to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You better be like Nehemiah. Don't come down. But you need to start doing more herbs in your body. You're swole up and you can't hardly breathe. Mulling is another thing for the lungs. You got COPD. You need to get that mulling. Go on Amazon and all of that mulling. That mother to clean your lungs and heal your lungs. Amen. Praise God. Put a little bit in a, in a bottle of water. That, fill that uh, needle thing up, syringe up. Put it in a bottle of water. Shake it real good and drink it. It'll help you breathe. It'll clean your lungs. It's got good uh, reviews. It works. Muddy. And then how much she go to God. Hallelujah, praise God. You got to do some research. They told my sister she had leukemia. She called me upset about, mm, what, maybe, might have been five or six years ago. They told her she's going to have to report to the council place. She got leukemia. The white cells are the old power in the red cells. I said, get you a can, get you a jug of carrot juice. Get you a jug of beet juice and drink it like you're crazy. Within four days, she had to go to the council unit. And when she got to the council hospital, they took her blood work and they run her out of there. Ma'am, ain't nothing wrong with your blood. I don't even know what they're talking about. Why they sent you here? God has corrected in four days. She said, since I drank that uh, that that cranberry, that um beet juice and that carrot juice, she said, I drank so much of it. Tell about to throw up. I drank so much. But she had leukemia. I tell one of the girls, my like granddaughter friend right now. Oh, she crying, talking about they say I got, they took a bone marrow, say I got um, leukemia. I think she said they say leukemia. Young people won't listen. I told her to do the same thing. You drink it like you're crazy. By the time they do the next test, they won't be there. She ain't hesitating, don't want to do it. I said, you need to do it, honey. If you do what I say, God always honor my word because I live holy. Do what I say. But she rather sit around and cry. And then they do what I say. Back like name them. When they told him to go dip in the Jordan River. He's too good to go dip in the muddy river. And we don't think it's going to work. We ain't going to even try it. That's the way he was. He wanted another way around. He didn't want to go out there in the muddy water. Tell me go dip out there in the river. Because he'd do something else. Couldn't His own hand. Our, our, our maid man had to beg him. And tell him to go in the river. 
go on to Jordan River. Go on and, and get yourself on there. And when he got in there, obedient, the leprosy left him. We always want some other way. We don't want the simplify that God has given us. Praise God. We'd rather take the hard way. We got to learn to be obedient people. Uh, praise the Lord, Sister Boss. Will you begin reading for me? First Corinthians, first chapter. Okay. First Corinthians chapter one. Okay. Yes, ma'am. First Corinthians chapter one, verse one. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. Called to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ? God is faithful, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. All right, yeah. So he said he greeted him that Paul greet them in the first three verses that Paul had given greeting to the church. Amen. He says an apostle through the will of God. It wasn't his will, but through God. Amen. And so Amen. Amen. Now he said our brother. And uh Hadamashi, glory to God. So he was writing unto the church of God, which is at Corinthians, which the church, it was the Corinthian church. And to them that are sanctified, to those that are living holy in Christ and Jesus, called to be saints, amen, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus, because our Lord, both theirs and ours, grace be unto you. So he was given a salutation. Then he says, uh, the fourth verse, I thank my God always on your behalf. The glory, he glorified God for the grace of God which is given them, given uh, you by uh, Jesus Christ. He saw the grace of God in their life. He saw God save the Corinthian church, enlighten them and deliver them. And he was giving God honor for that grace that he showed upon them. And he said that in everything, ye are enriched by him in the utterance and in all knowledge. He said he see growth in them. He saw what God was doing in their life. And even as a testimony of Christ, was confirming you by it was a testimony to God to see the act of God in their life to see that Lord fill them up with the Holy Ghost and change their way of walking praise God so it was a testimony to the Lord to see this in their life and he says so that ye come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord while you waiting for God that God gonna uh, bless you with gifts that you come not like it he said, who shall also confirm you unto the end. And it's him that's going to make you blameless. That you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ when he come to rapture the church. And he's saying, God is faithful by whom ye were called unto. The fellowship of his son. Jesus Christ, our son. Uh, 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 yeah, our Lord, I'm sorry. Our Lord. The son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So he could see the Spirit of God working in them. And he said it was a, a testimony to God. And that's what we're supposed to be today. We're supposed to be right here trying to do the works of our flesh in the house of God. When you're doing creative dancing, that's that's the work of the flesh. That's nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. That's the work of the flesh. And I don't understand these people with a doctor license. And all these high prestige of authority, and still, like Jesus told Nicodemus, and you don't know that you're a ruler, 
And you don't know that? I was thinking on the other day, well, yesterday, I forgot I was talking. I was thinking about how God didn't allow me to get into that. It was something in my spirit just would not allow me to get into it. And one day we were sitting in church, but we used to eat because I would stay at the church all day. And so they used to cook for me and we'd sit there and eat. And uh, I remember telling my secretary, how do she go to God? I was saying, uh, the Lord keeps saying, oh God, I can't remember what that word is. Oh, I can't remember. I had it yesterday and I got it again. Hello? Salute. salute, yeah, something like that. Yeah, salute. And I said, the Lord keeps saying this. I said, but we can look this up in the dictionary and see what it means. And it meant it meant the spirit of dancing. And God was showing me that's what happened to the church. It's the spirit that came up in the house of God. I will say the Lord. I will say the Lord. I say the Lord. It came in the house of God and introduced itself to the people of God. And since they don't see God no more, so the anointing and the spirit of God is not in the house. So they uh, allow the spirit to take control of them in the church. This is what God say. I say the Lord. I say the Lord. God say. God say. God say. Hallelujah. This is the spirit that have taken over the church because of lack of prayer. They told his altars down, he said. And they built a stage up there. And and got rid of his altar. And most people don't even like to sit the preachers don't how they were sitting in the pulpit anymore. God say, God say, God say. Because the wisdom of man have destroyed the house of God. How bullshit. God say. Because they lean into their own understanding. They're not living by the spirit anymore. They're doing what they want to do. But their flesh say it's good to do. Because this is how you're going to get the people in the building. This is how you're going to have a big congregation. You got to get the people what they want. No, you don't. When you take the house of God and turn it into a house of harlot, a place for the devil to take control of, God got a problem with you. In the book of Old, in the Old Testament, they tore down all the altars of God. When God raised up Josiah, Josiah started restoring the altars back to God that they was worshiping Baal on. So they don't pray in the house of God anymore. So therefore, the anointing of God, the presence of the Holy Ghost, is not there anymore. So they began to let this, when the Spirit come and introduced Himself to them, they just gave over in it. Because it convinced them this is the how you're going to have a big congregation. This is how you're going to hold the young people. And this is how the people will be glad to come back. Nobody was letting God rule this house no more. So they they running on their own merit. They doing what they think is right. Say the law. And you got to do what the law is saying. Hallelujah. So we got to do what the words say. Amen. Hallelujah, praise God. And how do they say? Uh, will you continue to read to the 17 verse? Yes, ma'am. First Corinthians oh, chapter God. 1, verse 10. I'm so now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but yet, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment for it has been declared unto me of you my brethren by them which are of the house of chloe that there are contentions among you now this i say that every one of you says i am of paul and i am of apollos and i of cephas and i of christ is christ divided was Paul crucified for you, or were you were ye uh, baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other, for Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. 
Hey man, we use the wisdom of word. Paul said he didn't come with eloquent speech. He didn't come showing his education. Paul was well educated. But he said, I'm forgetting all that I knew and I'm pressing forward to a higher calling. Everybody today want to show that they can announce Jewish words. They can say his name in uh, uh, whatever his name is in English, in Jewish language. Everybody want to show their knowledge, their own merit, praise God. Nobody relying on the Holy Spirit anymore. Nobody seeking God anymore, praise God. Everybody doing what their own knowledge say do, what their wisdom say do. And we become an enemy to God because we are not letting God lead his church anymore. We're not calling the people to the altar anymore. We are not teaching the people to bow before the Lord and call upon his great name anymore. Say the Lord. How do Moshe say the Lord? God say something. Hallelujah. So we're running on our own merit. Amen. Praise God. We we desecrating the house of God unto Moloch. We let Moloch run the house of God now. We're not letting the Holy Spirit run the house of God. Say the Lord. God say. God say. I say the Lord. Because we're running on our own strength. We ain't teaching the people to fall on their knees and cry out to God. See, when I was a young woman, they, they, they led us to the altar. They tell us to come to the altar. Ever since I've been pastoring, that's what I, that spirit tell us that. I don't be saying it. The spirit say, come. And when he said, come, the congregation get up and fall on their face before God. And God heals and delivers. I'm going to shake it. Because we ain't supposed to be running the house of God. It's the Holy Spirit that's in control. And when you give the Holy Spirit reign in the house of God, hallelujah, it's going to be some healing. It's going to be some soul deliverance. It's going to be some miracles that are in camp. But see, now we don't got so now we're trying to entertain one another. We're trying to make people come back. We're not allowing the God to do the work. But when God is in the camp, see, that's that, that's why they don't like me in this area. Because I I'm a praying woman. I'm Holy Ghost filled. I listen to the Holy Spirit. God taught me long ago when he made me a pastor. He said, I'm the head, and I want you to follow. So he would speak to me right in the midst of anything that's going on. And he would tell me what to do. And he or either would tell me, just, just watch me. Don't say nothing, just watch me. He would speak to me. So I know what Paul is saying. Who died for you? Why are you around here all about I'm a Baptist, I'm Presbyterian. I I am Jill Witness, and I'm Church of Christ, and I'm a Holy Roly, and I'm the he said, did the enemy them die for you? Are you confused? And Paul said, I'm glad I didn't baptize none of you because you if you say not, then you want to be baptizing in my name. I didn't lay my life down for you. Christ is the one that laid his life down for you. He the one that purchased the church. He the one that's at the head of the church. So you have to let Jesus do this thing, say the Lord. I bullshit you. Ah, y'all bullshit you. And we have to obey the God and do what he say to you. When we led by the Spirit, you're going to see some miracles. You're going to see some souls saved. You're going to see some mind changing. You're going to see some mighty acts of God. We need to return back on our face. It was a time that we didn't mind getting on our knees. Young people today, when you tell them they need to bow and need to kneel before God, they're like, oh, I didn't know that. That because these old uh, greedy dogs won't teach you the way that they receive it. They want to give you a new age thing now, which is against our God. Say the Lord. I say the Lord. Then I'm going to teach you like I got it. Why am I going to deviate now? No, I'm going to teach you like God gave it to me and like my leaders gave it to me. It brought a change in my life. It gave me hope. It taught me how to love God. It taught me how to trust God. It taught me to depend on God. It taught me to move, look for the movement of God. It taught me to walk with the Spirit of God. So I got to preach it like he gave it to me. How do bullshit you? And let you know that he's real. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. See, back in my days, we didn't have no opinion. 
whatever that the church told us to do, we was crazy enough to do. See, nowadays y'all come our knowledge. You come thinking you know more than the preacher. God can't fill no cup already full. He said you can't take new wine and put it in a cup that's already running over. You got to empty it out. I come from an era where they taught us to go to the altar. And we cried our heart out to God. Hallelujah. This was a personal thing. They made us get down and get a personal relationship with God. Ain't no stand up there talking about uh, uh, repeating no sin of prayer. No. You say you, you, you're you tired of the way you live and come to the altar. And we fell on our knees. We didn't stand up before God. We fell on our knees. Hallelujah. And we humble ourselves, humble ourselves before the Almighty God. And the God would bless us with the miraculous power, Habu Shete, of the Holy Spirit. We had to sit up there and convince ourselves and talk ourselves into holiness. Hallelujah. We're preaching our heart and God manifests. That's what Paul was saying to the Corinthian church. Oh, you are witness to God. You as a witness, because I see God have confirmed you. I see God have sealed you. So you is a witness to our Lord and Savior. So we supposed to still do that today. Our job is to teach you to get on your knees and reverence God. I remember a few weeks ago and I was telling everybody that need to get on their knees and reverence God that's able to get on their knees. Oh, I didn't know you're supposed to get on your knees. Oh, why you got to do that? That's because of the lack of our teaching. You always reverence your God. Jesus himself got on his knees and prayed. And he was God in the flesh. So why do we think we don't have to get on our knees? That's a showing humility. And God loves humility. And nothing wrong with your knees. Get on your knees. Praise God. The only reason I don't get on it because it's hard for me to get up. But honey, sometimes I get on down here anyway and just pray for the Holy Ghost to get me up. I could pull on something and get up. Because ain't nothing like praying when you get on them knees. Ain't nothing like praying when you lay before God. Hallelujah. Our whole church used to lay on the floor. Flat out of our stomach. Up on a sheet. Or spread something over our, our legs. And honey, all us men and all us, we on the floor. And we crying out for our God. And when people walk in our church, we don't even be have to thaw our church. That's why when the devil hit the church ground, he know what time it is. Then he tried to convince them don't come in. Because he know it's on. And he know his time is short. Because the power of God is at work. And so this is what we're supposed to teach you. To seek the Lord. Humble ourselves, get on our knees. They say it's hard to stumble if you're on your knees. You can't fall on your knees. You're standing up, always talking to God. You need to humble yourself. Get on your knees. So we got to do what the Lord say. And it ain't going to hurt you. That's Almighty God. But you are bow to the King. You'll bow to the princes and stuff, but you can't bow to the almighty God. What kind of sense does that mean? If you don't bow now, he said everybody going to bow later. He's going to make everybody get on their knees. Everybody, the kings, the princes, the governors, the presidents, everybody going to get on their knees. So why not do it now out of obedience? Why not humble yourself? So we got to do what the words say. God wants us to humble ourselves. How to miss you. God bless you. How to miss you. And if we do this, if we do this, say the Lord, God will see. If you do this, you're going to see God working your life mightily. We're supposed to possess power. We ain't supposed to be around here powerless. We powerless because we're not reverencing the Almighty God. We powerless because we are not seeking God. When we go in the house of God, we pray. We supposed to pray. House of God is mean prayer, and not no quickie prayer. 
We used to labor and pray every Friday night. Everybody got on their knees. The bishops, the elders, the mothers, the babies, everybody on their knees. And we would cry from the God. Everybody would cry out from their heart. We wasn't knowledgeable and sophisticated as the church today. And God did miraculous things. When a sinner came into church, the power of God took over. Praise God. Sinner don't even want to come up in there now because y'all in a big mess today is. If they want to stay in the club, they just stay there. They don't come to church the club. They come to church looking for something totally different from what they already got. But what do the church have to offer them now? Because they don't have no prayer life up in there. They're not led by the Holy Spirit. The pastor just counting up your tithes and offers so he can pay for Mother Boo car. Or take her to the desert land. At your expense. Ain't try to make sure the mothers that don't have husband in there that they household has been taken care of. Is they behind it any bills? They're too busy putting it all in their pocket. They ain't studying about the less fortunate. What kind of stuff is that, say the Lord? But you say you love God. Preacher putting it all in his pocket. God says so it'd be meat in the storehouse. So when Someone that I can didn't wasn't able to work and didn't pay they about to lose the apartment. We had to kick in and pay that apartment bill, keep them from being kicked out. Uh, we ought to pay that car note so they won't lose their car. That's our job, not to put it all in our pocket, say the Lord. I will shake you. God say so. We ain't to put it all in our pocket. Living in million dollar houses and his people is needing help. How can I pass the Live comfortably in a million dollar home. Knowing that some of you out in your congregation can't even pay their rent. Somebody in your congregation, praise God, is struggling. Somebody in your congregation need a car. Go sell that house. And help some of the poor up in the congregation, say the Lord. You ain't supposed to be living lavish like that. God ain't in there. I don't care who you are. God, that ain't what God ties is for. He want us to, to live by the ties and offering because he say we're supposed to. But he didn't tell us to be greedy. He said so it could be meat in the storehouse. So when a, a homeless person or when someone traveling come by, like Solomon said, praise God, at that time Solomon had just offered prayer up to God. But when somebody come by, we ain't got to never seen them before. And they are in need. We supposed to have something in the storehouse. Something to give them. Something to help them. Praise God. Give me information for your light bill. I'll see about getting it paid. Give me the information for your vehicle. I'll see about the car payment being done. You got to put it in their hands. You got to be wise, say the Lord. But this is what God is pleased with us as pastors. Amen. Praise God. When you are getting excessive money, praise God. You're supposed to have money in the treasury and storehouse to help those people that's in need. And, no, and don't turn people down because they ain't no member, because they ain't serving God. Young man is a preacher, him and his wife got their own church today because they, they went up in the church and he was a drug pusher and he was shooting hard. Time, I guess they had locked him up, he was scared to sell. And his family needed some food. And he came down and talked to the preacher and God told the preacher to give it to him. And he helped that man out. That man come back with girlfriend, girlfriend mama, girlfriend sister, children all of them got the holy ghost and hallelujah praise god and god delivered them and they got their own church now he said because of the act of kindness that the church showed him we ain't supposed to put all of it in our pocket not if we get something to 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 have you know if you pull like me and ain't got nothing but even then i still share i still do for people even what I have. But when you find a pastor that study grabbing and grabbing, you're already rich. What more you want and grabbing? God called them greedy dogs. Grabbing and grabbing. 
They in their heaven. They ain't going back with God. They live in their heaven. And you ain't concerned about your congregation. That is not a good leader. Our job is to look over the congregation. The Holy Ghost is supposed to be in us. That he speaks to our heart about his people. But because of the past ain't praying, he can't hear what God's saying. God ain't talking to him because he ain't humbled himself in seeking God. He's running by his own knowledge. And this is why the church is in the disarray today. Because nobody praying no more. Ain't nobody fasting no more. Nobody seeking out the spirit of God anymore. Just doing what you do. But the old church, they might have didn't have good understanding of all the scripture, but I tell you what, they were sincere in what they did. They was real, real in what they did, and they sought God. They put us on our knees once a week. We every Friday night was prayer night. In some churches, every Thursday night was prayer night. And we sought God with our whole heart. Everybody got on their knees and prayed as if they was all in the closet. And we all prayed and sought God. And God did miraculous things in the church. And he made his way for people out of nowhere. And we need to return this back to God. God, we need to give God a house back. So, well, the fasting come with, he said this only come by fasting and praying, like casting out demons. I was casting out demons about a year and a half after I got saved. I was casting demons out. But it came through fasting and praying. Because all like I say, the first 10 years of my salvation, it wasn't a day that went by. I wasn't fasting. Honey, I fast. And I didn't eat. And I went 24 hours at the time. I didn't. And, and it's a zeal that you have for God. It's the unction of the Holy Ghost that pulls us into this. And plus the teaching of the old saints that causes us to obey and seek God with our whole heart. And so how do we sheep? So when we are fasting, it gives us authority and power, empower us, amen, to speak to the devil, and he have to obey us. So this when we are fasting, that's what is going to give us the power to command the devil. See? So that's what you gain when you're fasting. So when you speak, he's going to have to obey you. He may put up a fuss and try to make you think he ain't going to wear. Your job is to be a good soldier. And stand there and battle with him. Don't take down because he want to show up and show and, and think make you think he's all that. No, no, we have to be consistent. We have to command and compel the devil, command him. He have to obey eventually. Sometimes he's stubborn and he want to try to make you think he ain't going. But I don't give up. I fight him till daylight. You gonna go? Praise God. You don't tell me what you ain't gonna do. You gonna do what I command you to do. So you got to know the truth, praise God. How does she, will you finish? Let me see where we at. Okay, finish us out. Yes, ma'am. Um, First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us uh, which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach, but we preach, Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are 
despised has God chosen, yea, things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according um, as it is written, he that glorifies, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. So people say, well, why are you preaching? Why are you calling Jesus? Why are you saying thank you, Jesus? So God say to the wise, they call it foolish. But it's God's foolishness, but it's wiser than the wisdom of man. See, the day you call it chatting and you call it everything, because the devil don't put all this stuff in your head. So you can't be blessed by God because you don't want to seek God the old way. You want to seek God the educated way. And the educated way ain't getting the work done. Because God loves it when his people depend on him. He loves it when we rely on him for everything. And when we stand independent, and I'll, he said, ain't many calls that's educated. Other words, that's called this think they got because they went to Harvard or because they got some kind of license. He said, ain't many called by that. He ain't called them by that. And not many, he says. Hallelujah. Just because they got education, they've been to college, and just because they got doctor's license. A lot of people got doctor license, they don't know the truth. Praise God. That's all the church want to do now. I'm Dr. Boo. I'm Dr. Baker. Honey, you going to hell if you don't stay in the fivefold ministry and you don't preach what God say preach. Your education of this world have nothing in God. And this is the way the church today is to see that. Oh, you don't have no doctor license. So when you think that God going to honor that, he has told you. They not I ain't many honor by no man that cost it got some education. I ain't what I go by. That ain't how I choose my leaders. That's man way. God don't deal that way. See, Jesus come from a group where they call ignorant and unlearned. That's why they rejected Jesus. If he came to a, 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 a set of Jews that Benjamin tribe. Or some of the other tribes, Joseph or something like that, they were glad to accept him. But he chose to come through the Nazarene, the Galilean. They can't have speak their own language. So he they rejected him because of that. But he deliberately chose that because, see, man always about education, they ain't looking for the best. So if you don't meet their cup of tea, and that's what we by the church in a mess today. Somebody looking for somebody to say they got doctor license. Honey, there ain't no way in the world God told us to call ourselves doctor. That's that's education of this world. Amen. God gave us simple little titles, but the education of this world that makes them feel good and proud. And God already done rejected them because He hate a proud spirit, an arrogant spirit. Praise God. God hate that. One of y'all famous preacher. God hate that spirit he got. He can't go in the kingdom with that spirit. He's going to have to get rid of that spirit. You can't go in God's house on kind of way. And y'all just seem to think it's because somebody saved that they're going to go to the kingdom. God ain't going to let us up there in no mess. That's why he said, I'm coming back at those that obey me. He ain't going to let you up there. He looking for those that obey. They don't have no problem with his word. All this self-gratification, God reject that. Looking down on the pastors that God have chosen because they're not dressed the way you want them to dress. They're not carrying big towels. you rather for the wolf to come in and deceive you than to have someone meek and humble with the Holy Spirit to teach you the word of God and teach you what God is pleased with. Because of the cares of this world, you go and buy the knowledge and the education of the world. With God say, I have no pleasure in it. I'm not a part of it. And so many ain't called that's in that prestige to carry itself that way. God say, amen, call. I don't, I don't deal that way. And we know that because when he chose David to be king, that was one of the things the prophet, he told, kept telling the prophet, it's not the outer appearance that I'm looking at. I'm looking at the heart of the man. 
no matter how small he may look or how bad he may look or what he may not look like to you. But God said, I'm looking for that heart that loves me. I'm looking for that heart that will going to humble himself to me. I'm looking for that heart, praise God, that know how to carry yourself in the spirit. That's what I'm looking for. See, but our mind tells us different. Amen. So we got to do what the word say. Dude. The Lord calls us out of darkness into a marvelous light. So right here divided and we can't get along with one another because you go in one church and I'm going to another church. And uh, you're confused about the nomination. Don't be confused because God is not about divided. Christ is not divided. We all supposed to preach Jesus. And the rules and regulation that man brought on the house of God is not of God. That's man rules and regulation. We all got to follow Jesus Christ. We all got to be born again. We all got to be filled up with the Holy Ghost. And if we don't obey God's word, I don't care what church you go to, you still go into the lake of fire. Because God only going to bring the people in that's ready to be governor in his, ready, ready for him in his uh, New Jerusalem. He ain't putting, taking us up there and we kicking against his word. He ain't going to take us up there and we fighting him. We'll be fighting him when we get up there. He's looking for a humble, obedient people that will obey his word and not question him. That's what he's looking for. Because it, it, it would be just like we already here if he could take this mess up here. So we got to we got to come to God's way. God way ain't our way. God don't think like we think. We we look at clothes. We look at what kind of car you drive. We look at how big the congregation is. Praise God. God said, I don't roll like that. That's not the way I look. That's not what I'm going by. You're going to miss God by glamour and by a crowd. That's how you're going to miss it. Praise God. Because God loves to deal with small groups because he loves to get the credit. See, when you got a mega church, you got the government money, you got the people money, who need God? See, you're up there and you're preaching like you want to. You're talking like you want to. You ain't trusting the Holy Spirit. You're a rich church. You're running on your own words and merit. You're not even humbling yourself to the Spirit of the Lord. So monkey see, monkey do. And God going to reject you. Praise God because you're caught up in your own way and drumble. And you're not allowing God to operate his house. All that debate, God don't want us to use this platform to debate. He don't want us making his ministers look bad. If you really love God and you knew God, you're going to go to them in secret and you're going to talk to them. You do not bring them on TV or on the internet and be little God leaders. That's not the way God wrote. Even if you're a false prophet, God will want me to go to you and shame you. He won't want me to bow to you. Y'all better learn who's God and what is God. Praise God. You get misled because you don't know what to look for. Praise God. God is a spirit. He's not arrogant. He's not proud. He don't deal with a proud man. God hate a proud spirit. When you got a proud spirit and you get joy out of believing God's people and think that you own church when a person thinks that their church is the only holy church only church that going by the god everybody else you put their church down ain't a church you agree with you're putting everything down honey you already going to hell you already lost because god don't roll that way say the law so you already in a mess praise you you belittle the saints always talking against them Everybody's supposed to drink out the same cup. No, you're going to say that because you get to drink first because you the pastor of the church. You don't have to drink behind nobody. So you're going to try to make everybody else drink out the same cup out of a hundred and some people. That devil is a lie. Ain't nowhere in the Bible God said you had to drink out one cup. But they're going to believe you because you're arrogant. You got a proud spirit, which God don't deal with. That's why you couldn't cast out no devil when you try to cast him out. The devil can't cast out the devil. The word of God said that. But because you're known to be a little to people, 
and people think that's God. Y'all better learn how God operates. God said he's kind. Loving kindness have I drawn thee. God wouldn't have me to get on somebody else's page and belittle them. I have the saints going from uh, page to page trying to look for somebody to debate with me. That's not God. Flesh and blood don't agree with the wisdom of God. That ain't God. You feeling high and great about what you're doing to God's leaders? If you really was a God, you would send them an email. And you would make a meeting to talk to them, not in front of the congregation. And you wouldn't make base your life on the you you in there what sinners business. What them sinners do out there? You ain't got no business even mentioning in the pulpit. The word of God say, don't even mention that which is done in the dark. So if you're such a man of God, why in the world are you talking about all them uh every time around you got some more person on your mouth talking about it. you belittle everybody? That's not God. God said to do long love and kindness have I drawn thee. Everything look like a monkey ain't a monkey. You better know what's God and what's not God. Say so you know them by the fruit they bear. You better get in the word and you better love learn what God is. God is not arrogant. God don't show out on nobody. God don't debate with nobody. Praise God. You think that's the way he did? And then lift yourself up and then always putting every preacher down. That's not God. That's the spirit of pride and arrogance. That's why you have to learn what's God and what's not God by such an instruction. He said, in them you think you have eternal life. You such a stripper, you'll find out you got proud spirit and God done reject you already. That's why he says, such out that word, such them scripture. Such a baker, you maybe think you all right, baker, but such them scripture bakers. And you're fine in them, whether you're okay or wrong. And don't lie against the truth. That's what the Bible says. We have to govern our life for calling God's word and not according to what we feel and think. And this is why the church is in disarray. They'll never be able to say that about our church because I don't allow that. See, I enjoy beating the devil up. I enjoy loosening God's people from the from our uh, demons and stuff. I enjoy that. I enjoy putting the devil on the flight, praise God. I enjoy seeing God restore the mind of the mental illness. I enjoy, praise God, to see God straighten out the limbs of people that have been crooked. Amen. Praise God. And been deformed and stuff. I enjoy seeing God move. I love to see the movement of God. I like to see the power of God come forth as a mighty force. I love that. Praise God. And I'd rather do that than be right here trying to tell on God's people and be littered them. When you find out someone don't know the truth, you email them or you write it to them. God's a decent God. God ain't a God that go around and build little people. That ain't where God works. God don't do like man. And then you're getting joy out of it. Read. What did it say? Read out again. No, that ain't God. You better learn what God and what ain't God, say the Lord. God will never act like that. No. And the scripture justified it. Praise God. So you got to know truth. God's the God of order. That's the way he works. And if we don't do it right, it go for me too. Got to do it right. And when a leader got a disruption with another leader, it's our job to meet one another in secret. And we're supposed to talk it out. Now I get up here in front of the whole congregation and in front of the world and debate. What is I'm trying to prove? I'm trying to tear down what God is also building. So he's blind in the area. So I'm going to pull him to the side and I'm going to enlighten him. That's what, what did Paul do in, uh, I think it's the 19th chapter of uh, Acts. 
and he met up with Priscilla and Aquila. Amen. Praise God. And he didn't belittle them. He showed out on them. So you got to do things decent in order. That's the way the Spirit of God works. Man work like trying to show I'm look at me. Ain't none as holy as I am. Man, I'm this and I'm that. And look at this and the letter this and the letter that. The devil is a lie. I wouldn't follow you down to the pond and back. The devil is a lie. God hate a proud spirit. And he ain't going to accept it from me and nobody else. You don't get joy at uh, pulling people down and, and glory in their fall. And in their lack of understanding. Now, if they're willing to reason with you, you sit there and reason with them in privacy. And try to show them in the scripture. You don't bring them in front of national TV and try to be the little them. They ain't God. I don't care who you are. God don't operate that way. That's a proud spirit which God already rejected him. And y'all got to remember, God can reject me. But that ain't going to stop me from getting people filled with the Holy Ghost. And it ain't going to stop me, praise God, for teaching the word of God. It's just going to hinder me from going to the kingdom if I don't repent of my sins. And y'all got to know, we got flaws too. How do I Sometimes we get lifted up and can't see who we are. So we have to keep ourselves prayed up and we have to keep ourselves humble before God so we don't get arrogant. That's why I'm so glad the Holy Ghost checked me. When I get out of line, he checked me and let me know that ain't the way you should have handled that. Or that's not the way you're supposed to do it. So God, don't I have to come back and apologize to y'all. I have to come back and admit, hey, I shouldn't have handled it the way I did. Amen. So the young lady, as long as the, she knew that she was coming on here agitating me, she came day by day. When God told me to let her, you know, let her know, let her stay here and tell her we enjoy her and we love her. I ain't seen her back on him since. See, the devil wants you to fight with him. He wants you to show out with him. That's his purpose. That's why he sent his little imps in here. God said, just let her do what she's doing. And tell her you love her. She ain't been back on up in here yet. See, he said, love your enemy. Pray for them that is fight for misuse you. But as long as she knew she was getting up on her mind, skin, she came daily by day. And she kept doing it. And the Holy Ghost had to give me wisdom and teach me how to do it. And I ain't seen her back up in here since I told her I love her. And as long as she keep coming, at least she hear the truth. Oh, boy, she ain't been back up in here since. See, that's why I tell him about Terry over here. When he come, just mute him. Praise God. Let him come. That's the spirit of God keep drawing him. He got to at least to hear the word. It's a possibility he might win over. Praise God. So he said, through loving kindness have I drawn thee. Long suffering we must do. It may irk me. It may bother me. But I got to do some long suffering. That's what he called wise to win a soul. Wise to men win a soul. Ain't, ain't no creative dancer. The bishop said, but you got to be wise to win a soul. That ain't what God talking about. You won't start doing what the devil wants you to do. The devil is a lie. God, uh-uh. You know good what that creative dance ain't God. Like I say, the young man in my church, he couldn't get that woman out of his mind because he her body. See, a man is, I ain't saying they weak, but God made a man to look upon us and desire us. When we get up before the man and we begin to work our body and move all kinds of way. We may not turn on every man in the building, but we're going to get somebody's attention. We're going to pull somebody back in the flesh. And one man come to my church. He said, I got a great pastor. And she's highly anointed. But she wear her clothes so tight. And when she's in the pulpit, I can't keep my mind on God. 
So for my soul salvation, I had to leave her church so I could be keep my mind on God. See, this is why we don't go before the church looking like harlots. God said we ain't seducers no more. You can't do that. Because we got to take care of our brothers. We don't want to cause our brothers to fall. And they, all of them ain't weak. And I'm not saying all weak. But we do have some weak ones. And everything in the church ain't safe. My deacon used to tell me, Mother, Pastor, every time that young lady come to church, she sit straight across in front of me and gap her legs open. He said, Pastor, I have to keep my eyes up in the ceiling to keep my mind from going in the wrong direction. Now, come on here now. One girl said, well, they ought to be not be so weak. Well, what kind of Holy Ghost are you got? Ain't but one Holy Ghost. So that tell me you need to go back to the altar. Because you don't have no love. You don't mind making your men, make the men in the church fall. Come on here now. That's why we put on clothes. When we was in the club, honey, we went as naked as we wanted to go. And we did it for a purpose. But we ain't seducers no more. We don't go around and make our brothers fall no more. We love our brethren. We want to see our brethren stand. Child, you know William, our, our prophet William done failed? <clears throat> Child, I know he wasn't right no way. I know he, had, he used to look at me. No. You're a holler. That's what you is. And you don't care about the brethren in the church. We are one another helpers. And this is why they, they have a, they, God have a guideline the way we dress. He said, we ain't seducers no more. We once used to be seducers. We once dressed to, to get a man attention. But we don't dress like harlots no more. We're not harlots. Praise God. These sanctified people today, they ain't changed their dressing. They got saved, but they still got the whole license up. Some of them will drop in a minute. Some of them just like to make a man watch you. That's still your whole license. You still a, you still like a prostitute. God call you a seducer. You dress this as a douche to people. Like I had one girl in my church. Oh, I love to make a man fall. You got the Holy Ghost, and you don't went back and pick up this old. Nasty way about you, Jezebel. Come on here now. Most pastors can't enforce it because they're looking like Jezebel themselves. <clears throat> Put a robe on when you get up before God's people. And now to keep their mind on the word of God. Praise God. Then you won't have to, they won't have to be imagining anything. So we when we leaders get before God put your robes on they taught us that in the church so that way and they told us not to wear them fingernails all different colors and stuff because they say when your hand get to moving then you take people mind away from what you're talking about because now they're looking at your nails and your pedicure and all this stuff or whatever manicure whatever it is the foot of, I don't know the foot from the dope but uh nevertheless praise God uh we got to be thoughtful of our men in the church. We ain't hoes no more. When we was in the world, we dressed like a harlot. We were seducers. But we are holy women of God now. So therefore, we don't try to tempt our brothers. So you sanctified women, quit wearing your dress so tight. You're just like the world and got perverse. I know you don't like it, but I'm telling you what holiness is. That's why God gave us older women to teach you what is holiness, what is modesty. And I know y'all call me old school, so you don't like that, praise God. But God said, tell you anyway. I have to teach you. If it wasn't for God, I would not be on here and be badgered. I wouldn't be on here and be talked to all kind of way because that ain't what I want to be. But I have to do what the Lord say to Praise God. Because God don't let me know if I don't do what he say do, I'm in trouble. So I have to do what God say to So I have to tell you what does say the Lord. Now. When you go before God, you ain't got no excuse. Because some of you going gonna to dress like you're going to dress. If God himself tell you to change, you ain't going to change. That's because your heart ain't right. 
And this is why God allowed preaching to come forth to help you to get your heart in order. This is why he tells us to take you back to the altar so you can come humble. Prayer make you humble and obedient. Without a prayer life, you're going to be like a goat. You're going to say what you're going to do and ain't going to do because you ain't got no prayer life. But when you're seeking God, and now while I'm talking, I'm gonna, while I set my mind, <clears throat> excuse me, remember 12 man night, we're going to fast. Save the Lord. Three days again. So we go on fast at 12 midnight. God is here. We're going to fast at 12 midnight. You that are able, you go 72 hours. You that need a break, saying you can't make it, you go from 12 midnight to 3 p.m. the next day. You young people that ain't taking no medication, come on fast. Push this body. Bury that old man. Come on. Gain some power from God and anointing. When I was a young woman, I fast. I didn't do my drink a little water, but I did never eat nothing. I'm going to teach you how to get anointed. I'm going to teach you how the power of God will manifest in your life. It's up to you to get. And some of you need control of that flesh of yours and that old flesh of mine. So this is the way you're going to get it. Through fasting and praying. And you don't eat nothing. When you fast, you don't put no food in your mouth. No food whatsoever. Now, I did give a leeway to those that have to take their meds. You that have to take your meds on a routine, I did tell you you could take a, 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 a piece of toast and then take your medicine so your stomach will be on an empty uh Your medicine will be on an empty stomach if you just got to have your meds. If you ain't strong enough to wait until you come off it. So you do it that way. But how to machine those that are healthy, fight that stomach, make that stomach fast. And I told you to get some blessed oil, get some olive oil. And that stomach get cutting up too bad, pour a cap full of two down your throat. And them guts will slide right on that oil. And that old stomach will stop hurting. It's a way around the devil. And I'm going to tell you how to do it. So you got to do this. How to machine. The fast is for three days. So those that are able, they go 72 hours. That means you don't drink no more water for, for three days straight. And you keep your mind prayerful. You study your word of God. Amen. As long as you, that's one thing about being hungry. It'll force you to keep your mind on the Lord. You got to fight now. You got to do it. You can do it. And those that going from midnight to 3 p.m., it should be a breeze for you. See, if you say you're on meds, I allow you that space. Praise God. We did that every, every, um, Every new year, beginning of a year, we did that. The 40 night of fasting, 40 days we would do from 12 midnight until 3 the next day. We did that because we had church every night for 50 nights straight. So keep her being weak. Or we had to cast out devils and stuff. So keep her being weak. We got off the fast every day at 3. And we went into church at 6 or 7. And then we go home, we go back on the fast at 12 midnight because we had to cast out demons and we didn't need to be weak trying to cast out demons. So that's why we had fasted like that. But in my younger days, I went 21 days a night, no food, no water for 14 days a night, no food, no water. But on the seven night, seven week, the last week of my fast, I drank a little water. But I did not eat for 21 days a night. I didn't eat no food. I wasn't sick. God didn't let nothing happen to me because he knew my heart. So if you got a zeal to do fasting, it ain't hard to do it. Sometimes you got to pray because the old flesh don't want to do it. 
But this is how you get your anointing. This is how you get strength in God. And this is what going to help you to walk upright and be humble before God. See, this is the way they taught me. This is the way the Holy Ghost taught me. And it works. So it's more than just walking around talking about I'm praying. No, y'all need to do some fast. This is what make the devil obey you. When you speak, he got to obey. He may put up a fight, but he know he's going to have to go. The devil always told me, I can't stand your power. I don't like your power. I hate you. That's right. Keep on hating me, Satan. Just don't fall in love with me. As long as you hate me, I'm fine. Because I've come to tear your kingdom down. So God gave us power. So this is how we get the power to cast out devils. This is how we get power and authority even stronger over our own life. So when we rebuke death or when we rebuke the sickness and diseases in other people's lives as, as well as our own, this will help you come productive. And you got to be a war. You got to be one that's going to stand and fight the devil because he always like to think that he's going to win. But you got to pray his kingdom down. You got to command him. And if you got a prayer life, he's going to eventually have to leave because you got a prayer life. That's what give you help you have that authority. And he's got to obey. This is where the anointing come through it. So we just wants to just talk about it, but we don't want to do it. Hanamashii. So but anyway, we thank you. We thank you. Pray for us. We got to pass this in a food bank test this week. We have our test done this week. They come in to inspect our food bank. And that praise that everything go well with us. We use the past that we don't use the fail that we've been having ever since 2010. So God always help us to pass it. So with some new amount of things, painting and different stuff we got to do, spruce it up a little bit and get that test done. So they come to inspect. Sister Glennis, God bless you. Good to see you, daughter. How to miss you. So come on, people. I never like to just pray and fat, pray and um, read the word. The Holy Ghost taught me how to fast. And I did it from day one of salvation. Within a year and a half, I was casting out demons in the church. Praise God. See, it's calling to your zeal. You got to have a zeal for God. You got to want to go to God for information. You want to go to God. You got to rely on God for everything. God meant for us not to stand alone, but trust him. He said, trust no man. And if you lean on him, it's going to work. Hello. I love to see you pop up on my stream. Well, praise God. Amen. Praise Jesus. How do we see? Well, y'all share and tell them over here we live in holy. Over here we're teaching holiness. How do we see? Glory to God. And we're teaching not only that, we demonstrate the power of God. So sometimes when I need to demonstrate and when we pray, God move. Amen. Praise God. So this is what makes your prayer more vibrant and more sealed when you speak to the elements. The evil spirits have to obey what you say. Amen. Uh, sister, um... Tico, are you over here on um, TikTok? <clears throat> Sister Peaceful, are you here? Any of my admins over here on TikTok? You got a person here you need to tend to. I say the Lord. Sister Tico, where are you? I just saw you came through the room. Uh... Inbox me and I'll give you the information. Sister Peaceful, there she is. She always could tell you. Sister Peaceful, there she'll tell you the information. His name is Janella. Janella, is that Janella? Janella. She's supposed to give you the information. Uh, she'll inbox you. Uh, either Tico one, one of them. If not, I'll check it when I get off. If you inbox me, I'll give you the information. But I don't know on TikTok over here, do they allow? But my 
panel is Apostle Baker with a dollar sign in front of it. Apostle Baker. And then they'll give you my other information. If you can't go through that. But that's my that's my C C A, if you know what that means. How do I machine? So I don't know the rules over here. I just lately start over here on this site. I really don't know the rules over here. Praise God. But uh, if you go on my profile and you're going to see at Apostle Baker, you'll see Apostle Baker. So my CA is Apostle Baker, but it has that dollar sign in front of it. Uh, yes, you can, as long as it ain't no foolishness. I don't have time for a long talk now. I'll lift you up for a little bit. Hello. Hello. Yes, Hello. I, how are you? I'm good, Apostle. I just wanted one brief word. Um, I haven't got your number, so if you can send me your number so we can do that FaceTime. Okay. One to one. All right. Excuse me, Pastor. I did give him your number in his inbox. I don't know what happened. No, it never come through. It never come through. Well, okay, she'll, I did send it. Uh, she'll give it to you again. She'll give it to you again. Hopefully, it'll come through this time. Yeah, yeah. It will be if oh. it will be for Lady Boss. So you look for Lady Boss uh to be the one that had you put it in your inbox. I didn't put it in your inbox. Yeah. It would be from her. So if you saw something from her, that's the information for me. Yeah. So you look in oh, your I see. Yeah, look again. But anyway, she'll send it to you the second time. Amen. Wait. Check now. Okay. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. So remember, I'm in my inbox. The, huh? I'm in my inbox now. I can't see anything. Okay, we'll double do it. There ain't no problem to send it again. Uh, don't forget, yeah. we're going to. I don't know what time you got in your city, but in your time zone, it's two forty-three now. So we go on our fast at 12 midnight tonight, our time, which is Eastern time. So join into the fast. I know you in a different time zone. So we want you to join into the fast. Fasting is no food in your mouth. So we started at 12 midnight tonight, our time. We don't start it now. We started at 12 midnight. Praise God. And when we started at 12 midnight, praise God, how do we sheep? You do it until uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m. But if you can go 24 hours, go 24 hours. And then we go the next night, we're right back on again. So some of them going to do straight 24 hours, three consecutive days. And some of us going to do it from 12 midnight to 3 p.m. for three days. So it's a three-day fast, and we want to stay prayerful. We want to pray for the for the household of faith. We want to pray for our country, the leaders of the country. We ain't got to say, Lord, do this and do that. Tell God, let his will be done, because God will got to be done. He know better than us. Pray for souls to be saved, and pray for whatever it is that you petition God in your own life. If you need more love in your life with God, that you love God people better, if you need more patience, you need the spirit of the Lord more vibrant in your life, whatever it is that you yet need it in your life, he said, we have not because we ask not. Ask God for more wisdom. Ask God for better understanding. Ask God to use you. You want to be used by him. Whatever it is that you petition God for, this is why we are praying and fasting. Save the Lord. So we're going to let you all go. Amen. All right.
goblets. Bye bye. Put it in your inbox. Did you get it? Um, I'm checking out. All I'm right. Check now. God bless you. Uh, milk away. Make it milk away. Milk away. Faith maker. God bless you. No. Nope. Don't forget now. Nope. We're coming back at seven thirty tonight. Nope. I never get it. I see y'all at seven thirty tonight. Well, okay, Pastor, I don't know what the problem is. I tried. I didn't get it. Well, try I again. It try I mean, I again. Just, I just, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Big deal. And, you know, I just keep trying. I don't get frustrated because the, you got to know, I, I I emailed my, my not email, but text is my, um, my secretary. Me and her could be on the phone. I can send her a text and she don't get it until later. So this is the system. The system ain't always just flip flop like that. And you got to have patience. And if I have to send 10,000 times, I don't mind sending it, son, until you get it. So I'll do it when I get off. All right. I'll send it. Cool. All right. All right God bless you. Uh, Check it now. Getting an attitude. Praise yeah. God. You got, you can't be that way. And then people wonder why they're in a mess. Because you ain't got no patience and love with God's people. Can't be that way. All right. We'll see y'all at 730 tonight. Bye-bye. One o'clock tomorrow. How to miss you. God bless you, Sister Sarah. Good to see you. Uh, Sister Elizabeth, Elvina, Sister Elvina, Sister Patricia, Roderick, and Sister Michelle. God bless you all. I don't know who else I'm missing. How to miss you. Over here in YouTube. God bless you. I appreciate you all. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm trying to see that I miss anyone. How to miss you. I guess that's everybody. All right. Good day.